Hey, welcome back students. We're going to go ahead and solve this problem here. We're going to do some Boyle's Law calculations. And so we have a problem set here and we need to begin by just identifying the parts that we need. We know that the equation we're going to be using is P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Okay, so let's look for the P1s and V1s, P2 and V2s in the uh, word problem up above. We notice here that we see the word initial and pressure of this one. So here is our P1 and we have a volume of 75, 70 milliliters. This here is our V1. The other item is when we look at this, we also see that we need to find the pressure because we don't know. So here's our P2, but this we don't know what it is. We're looking for that. And we also know that the volume is going to change and here this 49.3 is our volume too. So all we need to do is kind of plug everything into the equation and then we can solve our answer for P2. So we'll go ahead and you look at the equation. P1 is 1930 and this is going to be in Tor. That's the units for pressure. And multiply that times V1 which is 7570 milliliters. This is equal to P2. Well, unfortunately, we're looking for this. And then our volume 2 is going to be 49.3 liters. So here it is. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to get P2 by itself. So in order for us to do that, we do need to make sure that we divide by 49.3 liters. That cancels here, giving us this entire amount over here as 49.3 liters. Now, up to this point, if you look at this carefully, what you're going to find is that we have a little bit of a dilemma. We have a dilemma simply because our units here is in liters and our units in the, in the top number here is in milliliters. So we need to figure out, are we going to leave one of these in liters or are we going to change them to milliliters? And so essentially you got to figure out which one of these you're going to convert to the other because you can, the volumes have to be in the same units. So. I think it's easy if we just take the uh, bottom number here, we'll just go ahead and convert this to a uh, milliliters. It's a lot easier for us to do that. So we'll just go ahead and do this and we're going to convert this liters into milliliters. So in order for us to do this, we're going to have to take this number and we're going to convert it by saying that one liter contains 1000 milliliters. Okay, And so if we do that, that's going to give us a number. So on the right hand side, things kind of change for us, right? So we now have P2, and this is going to be equal to some numbers. So we're going to have 1930 Tor. This is going to be multiplied by 7570 milliliters. And this is going to be divided by the product that we've got here. So essentially this is going to wind up being 49,300 milliliters because our liters cancel. Okay. So to simplify this a little bit further, we're going to go ahead and take 1930 and we're going to multiply that by 7570. And that will give us the following number. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase this because it's getting a little cluttered here. So we're going to erase this top number. okay? And that number is going to be what we just calculated. And so that number turns out to be 14,610,100. Thousand one hundred, and remember our units here are tor liters now. Our liters are going to cancel, and so that leaves us with a value of P two equal to the following number. So we take our fourteen million six hundred ten thousand one hundred divided by forty nine thousand three hundred, and what that gives us is a P a pressure value of two hundred ninety six point four, and this is going to be in tor. Okay, and so here is the answer for this problem.